peace and blessings, peace and blessings. What's up, you guys? Um, today I want to be talking about. Hold on, one second. Yeah, today I'm going to be talking about a short little story about the two sisters. You heard about the news, like, their dad passed away from, like, some tragic accident or something. And, like, don't quote me on it, but you, I'm going to post it up on the thing so you can read it. And um, the funeral home wasn't generous. They buried the wrong person. And... I think it was purposely done and can you imagine the family is grieving over it to the point where they're suing them for 60 million dollars and this is a true story too and you know it's sad how the funeral homes don't usually make mistakes like that and it's called a Star of David Chapel in West I think West Babylon I'm gonna post it up on the screen so you guys can see it so shout out to the sisters. I know they're grieving and God bless their dad, his soul and everything. And I hope everything get rectified in a proper manner. But um, let me post that up so you can see it. Check it out. sad how people do anything you know for, and I don't know if they purposely made <clears throat> excuse me I don't know if they purposely made the mistake or it's just something that just random happened but whatever the case is it's gonna be resolved and they're gonna work out their differences now before I jump into my story I want to do a quick chapter read I want to read a lesson and I want to discuss it with y'all as I usually do and let's go so bear with me I want to start off with Psalm 70. I'm going to post it on the screen so y'all can see it. Okay. Psalm 70. Make, make haste, O Lord, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and put... And and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them turn backwards and put to confusion that desire my hurt. So this is very powerful. I'm gonna read it again from one, one to five. Make haste, O God, deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for the reward of their shame that say ha ha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually. Let God be magnified, blessed be his name. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarry. So that's Psalm chapter 70. Very powerful. So it's a Psalm of David to bring remembrance. Um, so God draw nears to you. When you draw near to God, He draw nears to you. And 
we don't realize how short life is. Life is very short, but yet long at the same time. <clears throat> I don't know if that makes sense. So, life is long, but it seems so short. So it's good to cherish every moment. And that's part of my plan too. That's why I do these YouTube videos, not just not just because I just want to sit down and talk crap, but you know, because I don't. Everything I, if you really watch all my videos, everything makes sense. Everything is a purpose why I drop a video. And it's also to capture those moments because you could never, that's like my way of going back in time. Besides reading a book, like you could always capture those little moments, whether it's you and your kids, you and your family member, just you you being isolated and transformation, changing from dark to light, or from from broke to rich, or broke to wealthy, you know what I mean? And it's just being abundance in God. <clears throat> That's a beautiful thing to be able to know wisdom and knowledge and also utilize it along with resources. Because everything is right in front of us. All we have to do is just pay attention and pray for certain revelation and discernment so we could make proper decisions. Speaking of that, um, I told y'all earlier in my last video I fell short and I corrected myself. Sometimes you gotta fall. It's like getting lost to find your way. So not all the time you're gonna be on your toes doing everything you're supposed to be doing. There's times when even the strongest guy gets a little burden when they need some encouragement to help them thrive. We all need each other, whether we realize it or not. And we realize that what's more important to us is what we do with our time, because time is so valuable. Why do you think you exchange it for money? Why do you think time is so sacred and it's so valuable that you, you got to cherish it? Because we, like Myron Goldman said, we always exchange our time whether it's a lot of it or a little bit of it for a little bit of somebody else's. I'm not knocking anybody, so please don't get it out of context. But I'm just saying like when we when we work our butt off, right? There's nothing wrong with working because the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. And I try to do work every day, whether it's picking up a camera, whether it's doing work around the house, whether it's helping somebody, my neighbor, even as much as holding a door for an elder or just helping others. It doesn't have to be financially all the time. I mean, if you got it, be that, that helps. But, you know, it's always from like just good deeds. When you do good deeds, good deeds will follow you. Uh, I mentioned it in one of my other videos that when you do like negative stuff, it follows you. And I'm not just talking to y'all, I'm talking to myself too. And I practice what I speak. And I walk the walk and I talk the talk. And I try, nowadays I try to say less and do more. Because I realize like every time I say something, there's always like some type of stumbling block that just mysteriously appeared in my way to delay me. So it's for me to like have the right, you know, like know how to step over the block instead of letting the block get to me or tripping over it. You don't want to trip, you just want to succeed. You want to just always 10 steps ahead. So with that being said, I hope this was a blessing to you. I feel like reading like a verse. Give me one second. I want to touch another topic.
This one I'm not gonna post on the screen. I might just tell you and you look it up. So this is Jeremiah 45. Jeremiah 45. <clears throat> From 1 to 5, the word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke unto Baruch, the son of Naria, when he, when he had written these words, when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of jo Jehakim, Jehakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto thee, O Barich. So, in the year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, thus he was saying, So the king of Judah, Josiah, son of Josiah said thus saith the Lord the God of Israel unto thee O Barat thou did say woe is me woe is me now for the Lord has added grief to my son so that's why in the scripture God was talking to Jehoiakim son of Josiah because his dad left him scrolls with rules and like policies to follow and he broke in it by throwing the scrolls into the fire. And that's why Nebuchadnezzar, by the word of Jeremiah, because Jeremiah did warn him and Nebuchadnezzar ended up taking him out of office and threw him into prison. Because you know Nebuchadnezzar was like, he was reigning in them days as the king of Babylon. And it's, that's why God was upset with him and he was like, I'm going to pluck certain things out, I'm going to tear it down. And that's exactly what happened. I'm going to put the scroll up so you can read it for yourself too. I'm going to just post something for you to read. So that's the son of Josiah saying to Baruch, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto thee, O Baruch. Thou didst say, Woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my seeing, I fainted in my sighing, and I find no rest. Thus shalt thou say unto him, The Lord saith thus, Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land, and seest thou great things for thyself. Seek them not, for behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord. But thy life will I give unto thee for a prey in all places, whether thou goest. 
I'm going to read it again so that way we have a clear understanding. But I'm going to read it from verse 3 to 5. Thou did say, Woe is me now, for the Lord had added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sighing, and I find no rest. Thus shall thou say unto him, The Lord say it thus, Behold, that which I have built I will break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land. So God is saying that he will pluck up everything that he planted and break down everything that he built. Because, and, and though thou seest though great things for thyself, seek them not. So God is saying, don't put your trust in all these great things because everything that there can be taken away for behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord, but thy life will I give unto thee for a prey in all places whether thou goest. So it sounds like God not so pleased with him. So God is warning him if he don't repent, I guess, or it's just going to be a, a bad curse that just follows him. But he's saying like, He's saying that he's so grieved that only sorrow been following him. And he fainted not seeing to find no rest. He can't find rest. And thus shall the Lord say unto him, The Lord said thus, Behold, that which I have built I will break down. And that which I planted I will pluck up. And even the land, and even this whole land, and seest though great things for thyself, and seest and and seek them not. So you're gonna see great things and you can't seek it because <clears throat> what you did is unpleasing, unpleasing to God. And you see, when you unplease God, it never ends well for you. Because that's the great I am. That's the God that what he says goes. His word never came back void. And that's the power of my God, the God of truth. And I, I love God with all my heart. You know, I'm not perfect, just like you guys. You know, I fall short a lot of times. But like a baby learning to walk, a baby fall many times before he get his act together and really find out, you know, and really master the art of walking. And then you see the first words start coming out, whether it's dada or mama, you know? And then the kid learns to, to run. And then eventually one day he learns to to drive or to fly and you know and that's where everything you know you learn you start advancing level after level so you could always learn and we're always learning no matter how much one might know like we're always in a learning stage because unless even when you master one thing it's always something new someone could teach you Especially like a coach, somebody that could discover certain things that would that would take you like two years to discover. You could save that by just having the right people around you and the and getting the right guidance. And you could save time you know, instead of having to go through it and learning. You have the right coaches. You could or you could finesse. So that's the beautiful thing about wisdom and knowledge and having a God revelation. That's the best you could ever have. You can't go wrong with that. Who you think taught the smartest man? King Solomon. God, you know, so he's the real, you know, he's the real master. He's the great architect. 
of the entire thing. So you can't go against that. That's just ballistic, you know, beyond ballistic. It's just so unreal. Many a times guys in the Bible try to face God and you see how it end up, you know. If God sees something in you, he might spare you. But you see a lot of times when guys rise up against God, it never ends pretty. So, you know, it's good to stay in our place and just continue our race. And just like I said, do good, pick your path and make the right decisions. Because I will never steer you wrong. Because I will want you to do the same for me. Give me the opportunity to choose and to also take heed instead of having to go through that and waste a whole bunch of time and then everything wind up back where it started. Just like with King Solomon, he was the wisest man. He was a great judge. And I learned a lot from King Solomon where I don't have to make certain mistakes to learn because even though I'm still making mistakes, none of us is perfect. But we can learn from all these great brothers and sisters that God put before us. And they lived out their legacy and their destinies. And they accomplished great things. And we could do the same. We could learn from them and be great. I hope this message was a blessing to you. I know I'm talking your ear off. I'm sorry about that, but hopefully everything makes sense. God bless you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, yeah, be sure to share, like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video. Or let me know what you think about the story that I showed in the beginning of this video. Take care, guys. Love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one.